I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Tears and Rain, also known as the Sea Beam speech, was written by David Peoples and altered the night before filming by Rutger Hauer. The monologue is often quoted as the most moving death soliloquy in cinematic history. But why? What makes such a short and simple speech so powerful? To fully understand the death of Roy Batty, we first need to understand the life of Roy Batty. Replicants were built by the Tyrell Corporation, primarily to be used for slave labor. Roy Batty was created as a combat model to be used in the defense program for colonization. As a result, he was sent to places all over the solar system within his short four-year lifespan. Roy, like all replicants, had been built with false memories. These memories are what make replicants more human-like and therefore easier to control. A more human than human is our motto. After all, without these false memories, these slaves would also not have false hope. Roy no longer wants to be a slave, so with the help of a small group of replicants, he hijacks a shuttle, killing 23 people in the process, and sets a course for Earth in order to find answers from his creator and to force Tyrell Corp into extending his lifespan. Enter Rick Deckard, the Blade Runner assigned to tracking down the renegade group and kill Roy Batty. Blade Runners look at replicants for what they are, not human, and they refuse to call it killing them and refer to it as retiring them. As Deckard tracks down each fugitive replicant one by one, he learns a little more each time about their desire to be left alone with their only wish of surviving. It's at this point where the scale tilts in the other direction. Instead of showing empathy, Deckard continues his hunt in a machine-like fashion as this is what he's been ordered to do. Roy Batty, still on the run from Deckard, finally discovers the Tyrell Corporation and meets his creator. Eldon Tyrell informs Roy that he was created special, and perhaps this is why Roy seems to have more human intelligence and emotions than other replicants. Rutger Hauer was aware of this, and he wanted to stuff as many human emotions into Roy Batty as he could. Before I got signed on, where I explained to him, you know, that I, what I thought would be interesting for the character and basically saying, you know, can I put in all the things that don't belong there? The things that are so amazing about people, you know, a uh, sense of poetry, sense of humor, sense of sexuality, uh, sense of soul. And really said, you know, I like all of them. Keep them in. We'll work with them when we'll find a way to get, you know, get them out in different scenes. Not happy with the answers given by Tyrell, that he can't extend Roy's lifespan, and that he's actually nearing the end of his four years, Roy then kills his creator. But even though this murder is brutal and graphic, what it really portrays is another human trait that we hadn't seen in Roy just yet. Frustration. Deckard finally catches up with Roy and Triss. It's after the death of Triss, or the retirement of Triss, that Roy realizes he has nothing to live for. This is where the role reversal really sets in. And instead of being on the run, Roy becomes the hunter and savagely stalks the Blade Runner. Roy could easily kill Deckard at any moment, but he's actually toying with his food, torturing Deckard just to let him know how it feels to be on the other side. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? That's what it is to be a slave. In the original script, the monologue by David Peoples is this. I've known adventures, seen places you people will never see. I've been off-world and back, frontiers. I've stood on the back deck of a blinker bound for the plutician camps with sweat in my eyes, watching stars fight on the shoulder of Orion. I've felt wind in my hair, riding test boats off the black galaxies, and seen an attack fleet burn like a match and disappear. I've seen it, felt it, 
and the final version by David Peoples, which was to be read by Rutger Hauer as Roy Batty. I've seen things, seen things you little people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion, bright as magnesium. I rode on the back decks of a blinker and watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments, they'll be gone. When asked about altering the speech himself, Hauer, in an interview, stated that Roy wanted to make his mark on existence, that the replicant in the final scene by dying shows Deckard what a real man is made of. He also said that the only thing he did was shorten the speech, some of which he referred to as opera talk, and then added the finishing line, all those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. In what appears to be Rick Deckard's final moments, Roy saves the Blade Runner, showing mercy, another human trait that Deckard, though human, would not have shown Roy Batty if he had the chance. What also makes this monologue emotional and special is that Roy is sharing his real memories with Deckard, not the false ones that were given to him by the Tyrell Corporation. It's as though Roy Batty is sticking it to Deckard at the end, letting him know that even though he's the replicant and the one on the run, within his four years of existence, he has seen and done way more incredible things than Deckard will ever do in his entire life. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Ten Houser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time. Like <clears throat> tears. Time to die.